We'll give a little background to Flava Flav first. So Flava Flav, whose real name is William Jonathan Drayton Jr. What no, it regal, is not. What a no, regal name. How regal. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> I saw this. I was like, no way. No way. Just to change it to Flava Flav. Which is crazy. It, I mean, that's all they reference him. Whenever you like Google, it's like Flava Flav, Flava Flav. Your mom gave you, actually, you're a junior. He's a junior. So somebody else gave you their whole name and you said, no, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Like, I know mom's pissed. Oh, you know it. Actually, I don't know, though, because because she kind of was featured a little bit on Flavor of Love. So I think I think she's a little you're proud. You're right. You're right. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, that's my mom. She's still alive. Oh, I'm curious. You know what? I want to look it up real quick. Oh, she passed away in 2013. Oh, dang. She was awesome. So his name, which is William Jonathan Drayton Jr., um, he was an American rapper, a hype man, and a reality TV personality. His music career primarily associated with his role in the iconic hip hop group Public Enemy, which he co-founded with Chuck D in the 1980s. Public Enemy was known for its politically charged lyrics and innovative sound. And flavor. it's so funny because we call him Flava, but his, it was Flavor. So they call him Flavor Flav. So a lot of it, I'll be saying Flava, but it's technically Flavor. So Flavor Flav played a crucial role in the groups as the group's hype man, providing energetic ad libs and contributing to their dynamic stage performances. So basically, he just hopped around, yeah, yeah, like a little John. Some of Public Enemy's notable albums include It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, which came out in 1988, and Fear of a Black Planet, 1990, both of which are considered classics in the hip-hop genre. Flavor Flav's comedic and energetic persona, often accompanied by his trademark oversized clock necklace, made him a distinctive and memorable figure in the world of hip hop. I think it's just crazy because it sounds like based on the research and stuff, like they're a pretty politically charged like group. They had pretty heavy things they were trying to speak on. And then you've got this guy who's like running around acting crazy with a giant clock. I mean, I guess it gets you attention. I don't know if it's the right attention. I mean, hip hop was different back then, though. Yeah, you're right. When you think about the hip hop culture, so you're right. It what you're right. A lot has changed in music in the last three, four yeah. decades at this point. Okay, so after hiatus from the music scene, Flavor Flav was invited to participate on VH1's reality show, The Surreal Life. During this show, he developed a relationship with actress Brigitte Nielsen. Following the conclusion of The Surreal Life, VH1 gave Flav and Nielsen a sh See, that's Flav. So weird. Uh, a show titled Strange Life, which detailed their globetrotting adventures in love. At the end of Strange Life, Nielsen actually decided to return to her fiance, Matea Desi. And now it's time for Flavor of Love. <laughs> I'm so excited. Doing research was so much fun that I may just go back and watch the whole series again because I'm so. And then the spinoffs because it was just so much fun. It's such so, a great show to watch. Flavor of. <laughs> Oh my god. And it's, they, like I was telling you earlier, like reality TV isn't made like this anymore. Like everything no. is so produced at this point, you can't get this kind of TV producing it. Flavor of Love was a reality TV dating show that premiered on vh one celeb reality lineup on January 1st, 2006. The show starred Flavor Flav, the rapper and member of Public Enemy, as an eligible bachelor looking for love. The format of the show was similar to The Bachelor. It featured 20 different women competing for Flavor Flav's heart, and they all lived together in a mansion in Encino, California. When I read this, I actually forgot, or I guess I didn't put it together, how they really do follow The Bachelor. I don't like The Bachelor. This is the only way I'll watch this kind of show. Same. Like, I watched this in high school, and then college or after I don't know but you yeah know, I had a handful of girls in my circle being like it's so good you need to watch it and I could not but do you know what it is for real like again this goes back to the point I literally just made it is far too produced the bachelor you don't get good tv when you produce it too hard that's true maybe that's what it is for me that's what it is wild 
and I'm going to let you speak on it. I'm not going to comment on how they were wild, but these oh, girls were wild. Don't you even worry. We're going to talk about it, and you can fully comment. <laughs> Contestant slash girl was given a nickname by Flav because he claimed that he was better at remembering nicknames more so than real names. Um, in some examples, of, which is so stupid, right? Just learn a name. You're learning a name or a nickname. You got to learn something. I think it was for the show, like marketing yeah. purposes, and I'm so here for it. Oh my gosh, it was good. So examples of some of the names were Goldie, Hottie, Smiley, New York, Pumpkin, and Toasty. And to preface, almost all of these were spelled incorrectly, if there was even a right way to spell them. <laughs> I loved Goldie. She was so she was good. One she of my was favorites. <laughs> she was so funny. I loved her commentary. Elimination ceremonies were called clock ceremonies. Where <laughs> Where, I'm sorry, where contestants were not elim uh, who were not eliminated received gold clocks with their picture and nickname on the face of the clock. So they basically got their own version of Flava Flav's clock that, that he hung on them. Once a contestant was eliminated, their real name was revealed, followed by a champagne toast with the remaining girls, which, savage. <laughs> you literally are like, here's your real name, get out, champagne toast, clink. <laughs> The show followed a typical reality dating show structure with the contestants participating in various challenges and competitions to win intimate dates with Flav. They also brought in the parents during the final episodes and also have a season finale take place in some kind of a tropical destination. So very, we're very on brand with like Bachelor. I, was Bachelor running at this point? When did, I wonder when Bachelor aired. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was. Like, okay. Was we were little kids when that came out. Like that might have been the 90s. Let me look. Okay. Ugh, we're gonna have to talk about it at some point <laughs> we don't have to <laughs> i mean if we want people to keep listening to us <laughs> we might oh it started in 2002 so you Fuck. have fun with that one <laughs> no i was trying to pawn it off on you <laughs> uh okay i'll i'll do it at some point because i feel like it is definitely like a pivotal thing that happened in the 2000s so we have to talk about it the show ran for three seasons, which you and I talked about, Kylie. I think we knew I think we knew it ran for three seasons, but I definitely was honed in on really only the first two. Maybe because New York wasn't in the third. You're so right. That I mean, that's also iconic to bring her back <laughs> and dump her again. <laughs> first season ran from January 2006 to March 2006 with Nicole Alexander, aka Hoops, winning. Season two ran from August 2006 to October 2006 with Chandra Davis, a.k.a. Delicious, winning. Tiffany Pollard, a.k.a. New York, was the runner-up, as we just stated for both seasons one and two. <laughs> Which, like that I said... That how to make TV. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's... She, I think she's also alone the reason why I want to watch, because a lot of the dramas that I went through revolves around her. And then season three ran from February 2008 to May 2008, which that's probably why we didn't want. That's a two year gap between the show, whereas the other one ran back to back. Tracia or Tresha, aka Thing 2, winning, and Candace Cabrera, aka Black, as the runner up. And this was, she was one of the twins, Thing 2. So I guess there, there was twins on the third season, and she was one of the ones that ended up winning. The show helped spin off a string of similar shows such as I Love New York, Rock of Love, and Real Chance at Love, as well as a bunch of others, as we mentioned. Um, Real Chance! Yes! <laughs> That's the spinoff of the spinoff of this one. Oh my gosh. Mm hmm And then our secondary spinoffs, Flavor of Love, Girls, Charm School, and I Love Money. The, um, more of the interesting show moments. So... I'll go with the most iconic one first. Start, I'm not even going to, you know, wait. I'm going to get with the most important one first, which was pumpkin spitting on New York after being eliminated. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I think watching it is the best. Just watch. I saw a gif of it just going back and forth of her just. <laughs> that and then New York's reaction, like her stank face with the claws. <laughs> yes. It was so good. So not only was it iconic to us, but it also received an award. So her. No, it so didn't. Yes. So Pumpkin, a.k.a. Brooke Thompson, and New York, a.k.a. Tiffany Pollard, both received the Best Fight Award at the Fox Reality Awards in 2006. Oh, my gosh. No, like, oh my I, that is 
in my opinion, I've always said that that is the best moment in reality TV ever. That is my Roman Empire. <laughs> like, yes. Like, I can <laughs> just see it. Like, I could see her spitting. And then I see New York's reaction with her claws, as I just said. And then you see um, Pumpkin going down with her, like, face bracing for impact. Yeah. Like, I could see the whole thing. <laughs> it was so good. Seeing it again, I was like, I swear I watched this last week. <laughs> Next, we have Hottie attempting to cook an entire chicken in the microwave. I had to go back and watch this scene when I remembered it, and her chicken on the show was a hot mess. So it was like a competition or something. I can't exactly, I think it was like make, bake the best chicken, it seems like. Um, but she was stuffing like hot dogs, carrots, noodles, and just a bunch of random stuff in her chicken. And then she basically puts it in the microwave, and because there's a chicken button, She's like, oh, I can cook it in here. And then she gives us an iconic line. Are you ready? This is what I'm she ready. says. She says, I think cooking chicken in the microwave is the most sanitary, sanitary thing to do because it doesn't have all the extra calories from the grease. You could bake it in an oven. You could actually cook it. Horrified by her chicken when she brings it out. And he definitely doesn't eat it, which, thank no. God, because it's definitely <laughs> not cooked. Next is another New York moment when Buck Wild throws a shoe at New York during the season two reunion. Do you remember this? I do. I do. Yep. <laughs> I love Buck Wild too. <laughs> oh my God, she was so good. So wait, somebody said something too. So, so one of the articles I was reading called Buck Wild, the original Cash Me Outside Girl. Yes, right? I thought about it and I was like, no. And then I watched the scene again and I was like, oh. <gasps> No, she totally is. Yes. It was so, so, that's amazing. So the thing, it was called Something Pooped on the Floor, which for the record, the nickname of one of the girls was Something. Her name was Something. Do you remember this? I don't, I didn't remember this. So I didn't, but I've seen a clip recently, like on Reels or something, and I was like, what? I don't remember watching it on TV, but I know it happened. I feel like this was, then it must have been season two then. Maybe it was season oh, yeah. three. Yeah, Maybe. but anyway, so basically what happens is I watch the scene and like after the clock ceremony and like right during the champagne toast, you see a girl kind of bend down and then like stand right back up. And it's like really awkward. And everyone's like, what's going on? Um, and then it like cuts to them walking up the stairs and they find a turd on the stairs. and essentially this girl like popped a turd off and then on her way to the bathroom and then she like owns up to it when like Flav comes and opens the door he's like was that you and she's like yeah sometimes my stomach hurts and sometimes like I have to go and then we'll round it out with a less gross one but we'll bring it back to Hottie again because Hottie <laughs> Hottie was a little bit out there she Hottie compares herself to Beyonce Beyonce exactly Beyonce <laughs> Beyonce are you kidding me <laughs> I've seen that gif used in comments recently so perfectly. Yes. For those who don't know, New York and Hottie were fighting. Basically, New York was saying that she thought that Hottie could have potentially stolen her jacket and they were going back and forth. And then cue to Hottie officially cracking and giving us the iconic quote of, all my friends who know me tell me that I remind them of Beyonce. And all the girls immediately just start losing their damn minds. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just so good. <laughs> Beyonce! Of course, New York, yeah. She's like, Beyonce? <laughs> and then she goes, I'm sorry, Beyonce. I'm sorry she's insulting <laughs> you like this. And then just to round out, I saw some stuff of like some of the some of the people who were on the show and like what they're doing now. Hoops, soon after the show aired, Hoops and Flav broke up. Um, she went on to compete and win in the show I Love Money, the first season. Um and then she was also, um, she dated and was engaged to Shaquille O'Neal at one point. Delicious. Sorry, I said that really weird because the name is spelled really it's funny. D-E-E, -E, right? Yeah, it's D-E-E-L-I-S-H-I-S. -E -E so it's like delicious. She was the winner of season two. She and Flav also broke up recently after the season ended. Um, and then she went on to appear on I Love Money 3. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and she also went on to star in several hip hop music videos. And she is currently 
working on being an influencer. Thing two, she was the winner of season three, and then she was promptly dumped at the reunion when Flav decided to reunite with Liz, who was the mother of his seventh child, Karma. Um, and then to round out our two faves, of course, New York. She was our runner-up for seasons one and two. And then she appeared on her own dating show, I Love New York, which ran for two seasons, as well as New York Goes to Hollywood and New York Goes to Work. She also appeared on Celebrity X on the Beach in 2020 and House of Villains most recently. Yes, and she <laughs> is amazing in that show. Still just as iconic as ever, um, which is why we shout it out because, yeah, she definitely didn't slow down. <laughs> Pumpkin. So she was third place on season one, as we know, and infamous for spitting on New York. Uh, she actually lives a pretty normal life, and that's why I bring her up compared to everybody else. So, because um, I, I don't know why, but I thought she would be doing something more interesting after her whole, like, spitting and getting an award for, you know, fighting. But she's just, uh, she's just an accountant. She works for an accountant firm in Bakersville. I just didn't expect Pumpkin to go from reality TV to accounting. I feel like you go the opposite. Accounting, yeah. then reality TV. <laughs> And that's a flavor of love.